Today on the channel, a new toy line begins with the Masters of the Universe Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover line, He-Man and Man-at-Arms. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! to the channel for another Masters of the Universe Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover event of a lifetime as a new toy line begins right here today at the table with He-Man and Man-at-Arms. But for all your Ninja Turtle He-Man crossover figures, make sure you're hitting up Entertainment Earth. Use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10% on all in-stock items. Anything over $79 does ship free. Got to get a deal out there. And I actually ended up getting these at Amazon of all places as they were immediate ships. So I said, okay, I'll do that. Didn't really pay off for me, especially if I was a min on card collector. We'll talk about that as we go through here. But Entertainment Earth shipping these right now if you are into these things. And I guess we'll talk at the beginning about this crossover. We've talked about it a ton in the toy news videos here on this very channel. I still am not sure about this line. It's very strange. As of right now, I'm going to be a loose collector of the line. I don't know if there's enough meat on the bone personally for me to get a min on card set. We'll see what happens in the future. Maybe play a little that long game if there's a deal down the road. Maybe I'll do something like that. I don't know. But as of right now, just going to be a loose collector on these. And I love He-Man. One of my first loves of my action figure life. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Another love of my action figure life. So you kind of think, hey, bringing these two things together, going to be a home run right off the gate. I didn't get that feeling right off the gate. It just feels weird and, dare I say, a little bit forced for me. I don't know. Maybe I'll get more into it as the line evolves and grows a little bit here. We'll see how it sells at retail. We do know there's a lot of Turtle fans out there, a lot of He-Man fans. If they can get both fan bases to jump in, plus maybe some new collectors that just like new figures, uh, it could be a big winner there for them. But I do like, for some reason, the He-Man style with the Turtles instead of uh, the He-Man style figure just going to NECA. Does that make sense? It would be a lot more expensive for us, but I guess it would be cool to see either way. Uh, but it looks like it's in the Origins uh, cartoon style uh, packaging, I guess we'll say. Obviously different graphics, but also the stance and the looks of the figure. So we're bringing it over to the Mattel side right here. And we know about the Ninja Turtles. They've never met a license they don't like. I feel like Nickelodeon says, hey, show me the money. You can do whatever you want. And that's kind of how it goes with the Turtle license, for good or for bad. It's tough for some of the hardcore Turtle collectors out there. But... It just feels very strange to me because usually with these mashups and things, you want to say, okay, that's a little bit of a mix of this guy and this guy. That's not necessarily the case in this line. It is a little bit, but also not at the same time. So it's a little bit confusing. So I don't know. We'll see how it ends up going. And I guess uh, that's enough jibber jabber here. Let's do this unboxing. And of course, we do this unboxing like we do all the other unboxings on the channel. We're going to take a look at the packaging. We're going to talk about it. We're going to unbox it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see where it goes from there. And we're going to start off with He-Man, I guess. And it looks like He-Man's been through some dark times, apparently. Uh, I think they said he got into some ooze or something like that. Or <laughs> mutagen, I guess, more likely. Uh, and it changed him. I don't know. Maybe it'll stay in this comic book. And that's one nice thing. We get a little bit of a story in a comic book that can kind of help build our imagination tell us what's going on here but it is the very familiar masters of the universe style packaging design with brand new bright graphics that really kind of bring the turtle aspect into it with some of the brighter colors uh definitely looking very cool you got skeletor up here it looks like we got shredder up there breaking out of the rock once again masters universe logo down low turtles logo down low as well then the bubble window with the comic book behind it beautiful artwork in the back and a little of that story looks like shredder got he-man a uh, Got him all mutagened up is what it does look like there. And then you got the cross-sell Donatello, Leonardo, Man-at-Arms, and He-Man. We'll do Donatello and Leonardo in another video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but not a whole lot going on down at the bottom on this one. A very, very interesting figure. But without further ado, let's get old He-Man out of the package. Truly find out what all the fuss is about. And there's, there's some fuss. There's always some fuss when He-Man and the Turtles are involved. Uh, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. There it goes. See you later. Goodbye. A little plastic prison there for He-Man. That's not the He-Man I think of, uh, that's for sure. And it looks like this He-Man is locked in McFarlane style. He's locked in McFarlane style. You never go full McFarlane unless you are McFarlane. That's a, a good tip out there I try to live by uh, every single day. 
You only go full McFarlane if you are a McFarlane. And shout out to all the McFarlanes watching. Shout out to Todd McFarlane on the couch over there. There you go. See you later. Goodbye. Twist ties all over the place. Let's get down to business here. Hmm. Very interesting. Of course, we do get, oh, we get the little instruction book too. You got to have that. Talks that everything is plug and play. Of course, the arms, you can mix and match. Choose your own adventure if you really want to. Then we get the comic book. Fairly uh, thick comic book right here. And it looks like it starts off there with the usual crew going at it. And we got some new turtle friends coming over. We got Trap John and his mouse are going on. I don't see... Oh, there it is. Towards the end is where He-Man takes a step to the, to the wrong side, I guess, is what he does. Huh. Very interesting. It looks like uh, the turtles introduce uh, Eternia to pizza. So good job of the turtles there. I don't know what to think. But this He-Man doesn't feel like He-Man. He doesn't got his shield, doesn't got his axe, doesn't got his power sword. He's got a club, though, all in gray. A nice club here. He's going to hit you over the head. Bad day at the office. You get whacked with one of those kind of things. But that's it as far as accessories go for He-Man here in this universe. But this He-Man is very interesting. Now, we actually saw two different prototype uh, glamour shot images of this He-Man. As we saw one that was very translucent, translucent, easy for me to say, uh, style um, plastic. And then we saw one a little bit more frosty. And I would say this is the one we have right here, a little bit more frosty. Now, not sure if there's a variant or if that was just an early sample or what happened there. Uh, but this one does have a little bit of translucentness to it, uh, but it's a smoky translucent is what I would call this one here. But definitely looks interesting, definitely looks striking, definitely looks like He-Man with a touch of difference, and I think that's what they're going for. Of course, you got the He-Man vest over the top, some spikes on it. Black and orange, a little different color scheme there. And then the head, that translucent plastic, big old mouth open up, and then those fiery red eyes. You know he's a bad guy with those eyes. Got a black bandana going around like a Ninja Turtle, really, uh, going off to the end there. And then that striking green hair, which looks really wild and really crazy. He's living that spike life. You never go full spike unless you're Rob Halford in the 70s. But he does got the spikes on his forearms and into his wrists here. Then you got the Spike Eternia Championship belt going on. Tough day at the office. You do got the Eternia, of course, classic loincloth in black there. And then you got the brown and black attack in the boots department. Looking pretty good for as far as I see right there. And then you got a little bit of, it almost looks like lightning kind of in the skin and on the chest. So he does have some of that going on. This vest is removable if you would like to remove it for whatever reason. I don't know why you would. You got to keep it all He-Man, right? Uh, but it does look good. It's definitely a striking figure. It just feels like a figure, though, without reading through this comic book, maybe for more insight or knowing more to the story. It just feels like a, a decently cool-looking figure to me at this point, at this point. But very interesting looking here. I guess I missed there. He's got the boot down here. Down on this one, nice attention to detail. His foot has came through the boots of the boot. So I do like that. The foot coming right through there, looking very, very nice. A little bit translucent down here in the knee department, I would say. Uh, you can see some of that th see through, but still a little bit murky as far as that goes. Articulation could be the same as our Masters figures, arms all the way around. Uh, no bicep cut on this guy, though, so I guess it's not the same. You get the side to side at the elbow, up and down. He does have some kind of long arms here, almost like monkey-like, gorilla-like arms going on. Very long. You do get the waist articulation. You do get the head back, forth, side to side, up and down. You do get those splits, of course. There it is. You get the legs that go up, bend at the knee, side to side at the knee, side to side at the boot cut, ankles back and forth. So we get all the usual articulation outside of the bicep cut on this one. Now, does he fit on a Mattel ringside collectible stand? I would imagine he will. And what do you know? He does. There you go. So an interesting one. I still have not wrapped my head all around this He-Man figure. It's obviously not my He-Man. Obviously, it's a new story, a new crossover. So it's going to take a while to get used to these things, I think. This is the first one of four here in Series 1. we got a couple of deluxe figures come. Series 2 already up for pre-order. So there's life in this line Rumors going around that there's going to be four waves. We'll see what ends up shaking out, what ends up happening here. But now we turn our attention to old Duncan himself, old man-at-arms. Uh, one of my all-time favorites out there, of course, man-at-arms. Looking interesting in the packaging once again. Masters of the Universe. Uh, Turtles of Grayskull, man-at-arms. Turtle logos, Masters logo on the bubble. Very interesting there. On the back, not a lot going on, of course. I don't think there's really anything going on. It looks like he's fighting Krang on the back. 
good for him. You got that same cross cell, and it looks like his shield does remove out the back of him. Now, I did get this from Amazon, and these were all just thrown in a box. No protection, no nothing in a huge, huge box, which is really weird. And my uh, plastic is cracked on here. So good thing I'm a Minon card collector, I guess. That's why you need to go to the Entertainment Earths of the world, I think, is the, probably the answer for that at the end of the day. We're going to pull Man-at-Arms out. There it is. Nothing too fun going on. It is what it is. Packaging. See you later. Goodbye. We get the exact same comic, and then you also get the little instruction seat, sheet. So we get a lot of the same stuff right here. That makes a lot of sense. Looks like we got the club. We got some forearm stuff. We got some accessories here. And once again, he's locked in. They don't want man-at-arms going anywhere, and I get it. He's a powerful guy in Eternia. And one I always say, I, I liked him as a kid. I like him a lot more now that I'm older. Maybe that's one of those things. You're like, oh, I like man-at-arms more. He, he's a cool guy. He's got a great mustache. Who knows? Who knows? Can I get this off? Uh-oh. Twist tie on the ankle. There we go. We're free. We're free. And we're free. See you later. Goodbye. All right, there it goes. Twist ties off to the side. And let's dive into this one here. Let's start with these accessories first. Looks like we got the little forearm here, of course. Forearm protector. We've seen that with Man-at-Arms in many a different incarnations over the years. But it does look good. It is what it is. I'm here for that. The blue and orange attack compels you, compels you. Got the big old club here. Of course, him and Donatello both being kind of scientists, loving their weapons and inventions and things. It's almost like a Donatello stick on top of a club is what this kind of reminds me of, first impression. All orange colors going on. Got a little hole down here through the bottom. Maybe you can slide it on a rope or something. Who knows? Maybe it's a thing to hold on to as you're sliding as well. So multi-use instrument right here. But a big old club at the top. Got that shell on the top, a little turtle aspect there. We're making it look a little bit more turtley maybe. And then we get Man-at-Arms right here, looking like a, only a Duncan could look. He's got a shell on it. You can pull this off the back. Use this as a full-on shield if you want to. A shield shell, a shell shield. Say that like 20 times fast. Orange and blue, once again, the predominant colors on this one looking very nice. But it does plug back in there if you want to. So I like the uh, bit of storage right there. I always like to store my stuff on my figures, as you guys do know. Now, he's got a big old fur up here. Keeps him nice and warm in those cold Eternia months, I guess. He's got a little brown fur up there. It is man-at-arms in the face. Got the big push broom underneath the lip, of course, or underneath the nose on top of the lip. Uh, brown eyebrows or black eyebrows to match, and then a nice eye detail on him as well. Helmet is not removable on him, but it is a man-at-arms style helmet. You got the blue, you got the gold, you got the black. And then you got the kind of tealish, greenish color body on Man at Arms here against that orange. You got the orange chest protector. You got the shoulder protector. Uh, you got the loincloth, of course, back there. And you got a little bit of a protector belt. Then, of course, you went half Terry Steinbach with the shin guard looking good there. And then you got the brown boots, brown shoes as well to match his attorney of loincloth. Looking good there, but it definitely feels like Man at Arms. If somebody hands me this, I'd say, okay, that's Man at Arms. Maybe my, not my Man at Arms, but it is a version of Man at Arms. So I, I know who this is. And he's got a little shell design here on the shoulder pad, bringing it back to the Turtles universe a little bit. But it is truly Man at Arms. It's not a crossover. It's not, this is what Man at Arms and Donatello would be if they joined forces. It's nothing like that here. So that's one thing to take note of. Uh, but it's interesting. Uh, no doubt about it, it's interesting. I'm still not sold on this line. I like what they are, and I'm not sold enough to go on a double-up club here. And I really do like my Masters figures, Master Stylized figures. There's just, I don't know what's missing for me. And maybe there's nothing missing. It's okay sometimes just not to be all in on something. Uh, but these are very interesting. They're going to take a little bit more growth on me than a traditional Turtle line would or a traditional Masters of the Universe line would. Uh, but, you know, WWE superstars, uh, when they did the crossover with Mattel and the Masters of the Universe, I enjoyed that line from the get-go. So, I don't know. I don't know. It's weird trying to figure this out for me still. And I'll get there. I'll get there. I always do. Uh, but Man-at-Arms looking pretty cool. He-Man looking even cooler. I just got to understand the story a little bit more. I think that will help things along the way. We'll see what happens there. But interesting. That's what I'm going to say about these. I don't hate them. I don't absolutely love them. They're somewhere in the middle for me as of right now. But we'll see. I keep saying we'll see where it grows. Goes and grows in 2024. But what are your guys' thoughts on this set? All in, still kind of unsure, just still kind of scratching your head like me. It really feels like it should work more than it does for me because I like both lines separately. Bringing them together should be amazing. 
I'm still just not real sure. So we'll see. That's kind of what this video should be called. The unsuredness. I don't know. But you guys tell me what you think of these two in the comments down below. Of course, you made it this far. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. We got videos every single day. And we got videos every single day on two YouTube channels. So make sure you subscribe to Kyle Peterson 2.0 as well as the original channel. And then, of course, don't forget about Patreon. You head over there. You can be a free member of the Patreon now, I guess I am told. So you can go over to Patreon and sign up there. You can see what's posted, all that kind of stuff. But of course, both channels' videos, you get early access at Patreon. You get bonus videos, giveaways, Q&As, pizza reviews, dog stuff. It's all over there in the old Patreon channel. Patreon, best way to support the channel. Uh, you guys know that by now. You can also support the channel at ProSNTs.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Don't forget social media. Sir Paul 64 on the X. The underscore Kyle underscore Peterson on threads and on Instagram. So for a little Turtles and Grayskull round one, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.